today I was thinking we could talk about sustainability, particularly in fashion in general when I come home from like work or whatever and I want to like decompress. I tend to watch those like YouTube hauls that are like I spent $500 at this brand or like I bought the most expensive thing. There are big like sustainability issues with that because you're buying so much stuff and a lot of it is stuff that you don't actually need. You're just doing it for like the viewers. Let's say you return them afterwards. The cost of like shipping like all of that stuff like to you and then like shipping it back, like that's still like carbon emissions or whatever. So like that's just bad for the environment. Another thing that's timely is that Forever 21 like bankrupt or it's like shutting down. And I think that was like one thing like fast fashion. Maybe it's kind of a sign hopefully if like changing consumer interests like people are willing to spend more and invest in like good quality things rather than like buy like fast fashion i don't really buy from sustainable brands new because it's so expensive like reformation is very expensive everlane is also kind of expensive i have things from those brands but i bought both of them secondhand which i think is like an interesting like kind of like how can you be sustainable in college when like sustainable fashion is kind of expensive also about like thrifting like over the last few years it's become like a pretty big trend and i'm glad it has but also like then you also see like huge goodwill hauls even though these only spend say a hundred dollars they have a huge bag of clothes and like I don't know if you really need all that. So I feel like it's kind of like a dual issue, both consuming less, but also like consuming wisely. Like sustainability is definitely like something that's on like most people's minds, but like like myself included, like I don't know if I'm really like doing that much to actually be sustainable. Also same, but also because like I like to order on the app. This is literally just pure laziness, Um, but I order on the app and then so I don't want to like go there and like give them my cup. So then I just get like the single use thing and then I feel like bad about myself. And even though I toss them the recycling, it's still worse than if you just use the same usable cup. For me, the effort and also just like, I'm always like, oh, I'm just one person like doing this one thing thing won't change much but also like i know over time it builds up tldr i'm like kind of a horrible person <laughs> it's like something i think about but i feel like i don't do enough i'm just like i should be more sustainable but then i don't practice it i was talking to someone else and they also said that like convenience is a huge factor in terms of like trying to be sustainable which i think like is also true for like ordering online if i can buy something from the store i just get it from the store even though it might be cheaper on amazon and it has like free shipping but like because then that cuts down on like the shipping costs and like the packaging and stuff like the stuff is already there i feel like the good pl oh well this is kind of a spoiler alert for the good place do you watch it mm -mm. well basically the good place is about the show where it's like an alternate version of like heaven and hell and like you accumulate points so like if you do a good thing you get points if you do a bad thing you like get subtracted when you have like a super high point score when you die you like can get to the good place or if you have a super low one then you're in the bad place big spoiler alert um later on the seasons they find out that like no one is getting accepted into the good place because like when you do a simple good thing it has so many negative effects so like for example i think the example they used was like this guy bought flowers for his mom which you would think is a good thing but then they're like oh like the flowers that they bought were like not fair trade and like the soil had like gmos and like the seeds like caused some like adverse health like health effects or whatever so it's kind of like an interesting take on how like it's hard to be like i don't want to say woke but like woke in like this day and age when you have to be so like educated on like well this company is actually supporting this and like well if you support this your money is actually going to this and like if you do this like it has an adverse effect in like this ecosystem or whatever yeah i definitely think there's like some sort of like mental someone being overwhelmed or just like mental exhaustion because it's like there's so many things you have to re like consider in your life and then just living is hard oh thinking so deeply about how every single one of your actions like affect the butterfly effect like the butterfly flaps its wings over the ocean and causes like a hurricane elsewhere like some things like it just comes so like i just do so naturally and then i when i actually stop to like contemplate like oh like say like just ordering something from amazon and it's like oh wait okay but then they don't pay their workers and also just like the oil and just flying it over and just like the morality of my actions i think it weighs down on you and it's like it's like no matter what you do well there's nothing i can do so might as well be the worst person i can um uh, when you said like there's no point in it so i should basically just like be the worst person ever it kind of reminded me of the whole like argument between like fate versus free will uh, one of the articles i read from the atlantic was basically about how like free will doesn't exist we have to believe in free will in order to have like a functioning society because if people don't believe in free will then they're gonna be like well like this is already predetermined anyways whatever i'm gonna do is already like faded so i might as well just like do whatever i want and like the consequences are already gonna be the consequences so i don't know do you believe in fate or free will um, I was reading, I'm reading Trick Mirror by Jao Tol Tolentino right now, and she kind of discusses this, how we have different identities for different situations, and it's constantly just like a reflection of ourselves. It's like, we don't really have like a genuine like self. Like everything we do, we want people to perceive us a certain way. So that's what we, why we make certain decisions. It's not because we truly want to. I think like we act based on what we think other people will like perceive us as if we do the certain thing. We're driven by other people's perception of us and not by like really like any innate like, oh, this is what right or wrong. It's kind of just like, what do other people think is right or wrong? And then we kind of implement it in our own lives. I feel like that way sometimes too, where I'm like, who am I when like no one's watching? You know? <laughs> I'm just like a slug <laughs> lying on my bed, like reading and eating. 
like great. I was gonna say about the whole like trick mirror thing. It like first of all made me think of like code switching, which I think is like super interesting because I definitely notice myself doing it. I do like change my personality slightly based on like who I'm around. But sometimes I'm like, do I have a personality or is it just like <laughs> how I want other people to perceive me? Because like even in doing this video thing. Some people have like responded and been like, it's really cool that you and your friend do this. And I'm like, oh, look at that. Like the people think I'm an intellectual, you know? So like even in doing this, people think about me in a different way. And like, so sometimes I'm just like, damn, like what is my personality? Honestly, I think kind of our identity is made of like different, it's like multifaceted and it's kind of like what we choose to emphasize in certain situations. So maybe it's not like one thing is like fake. Maybe it's just like we choose to like dampen some parts of our personality and like accentuate some others. Maybe that's just like my excuse for like, otherwise I just be like, yeah, I'm like very fake. But right now I'm like spending more time by myself just like evaluating and like journaling just to like try to figure out who I am the way I like project myself it's like exhausting I think like if I feel exhausted after a certain interaction I'm like I don't think that was me being genuine then that's just me putting up like a facade so I noticed this a lot when I was like traveling I find it like so much easier to talk to strangers because I feel like when I'm talking to people who like know of me or who are like connected to me somehow that they have this image of who they think I am like from my social media and from like how they see me interacting with other people and who my friends are and all of that versus when I meet a stranger, I could literally be like whoever I want and I can share whatever I want. It's just so much easier to talk to strangers. Yeah, that's true. And also it's just like, also I think the fact that like that interaction, you kind of know like, oh, you could probably like never see them again. And it's just this like one time thing. I think it takes the pressure off of like, oh, making necessarily like making a good first impression. I've had really good conversations with like Uber and Lyft drivers, <laughs> like just because of this, because then it's kind of just like, I'll never see them again. And because they're strangers, they judge me less or their judgment will actually matter because I won't actually see them. Kind of the same thing as going to like Kelsey or therapy it's like so much easier to like speak to someone i've like meet like two minutes ago than like things that i like i'm still like not comfortable like telling my friends mm -hmm. i saw this um artwork at the san francisco moma like and it was like this like water pool and then they had like ceramic bowls floating on it they would like bump into each other a little bit and then like float away but i thought it was really interesting because there were ripples in the like pond and kind of reminded me of how you can like bump into someone like very briefly and like sometimes it's just like you like literally like run into someone and then you're like oh sorry and then like you leave but like you can have conversations with people that like drastically change how you think and like affect your life way after and like creates like ripples and like you can affect other people with like the ideas that they brought to you well, I don't know like modern art in general I feel like it's like it's a vessel for like your ideas okay I'm gonna cut that out because now it sounds super like hoity-toity I'm like oh, I like because <laughs> I think it's not conventionally beautiful sometimes you have to spend longer to actually like find the meaning it's not something that like you can just gaze at and you're like oh that's nice and then walk away sometimes you just like stare at it and it makes you uncomfortable but then from the discomfort emerges a message <laughs> this is like our most stuck up podcast yet <laughs> Yeah, it's really <laughs> faux pretentious. We're like, we try to sound like smart and educated and informed, but it's just us like blathering about. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Maybe it's like stuck up of me, but I think that some of the things we say are like kind of smart. But I'm also like, how unique are we really? You know, like, yes, the things that we say are like mostly valid, but like, <laughs> are, are, other people are probably having these thoughts too. They just like didn't make the podcast, which I guess is the same thing about modern art where it's like, oh, I could have drawn these like yellow squares, like, but you didn't. So therefore it's art. So therefore our podcast is worth the time. Another thing that I forgot to br bring up for um, thrifting, it's like this thing that used to be seen as like, oh, you gross, like you're wearing someone else's clothes. It's now like, oh my God, like so many people wore this before me. And now it's like, it has memories, which romanticizing like certain people's genuine day to day, like they can only afford the thrift store and like. Yeah, I feel like honestly, I haven't gone to the point where I've, I don't think it's like replaced how much I consume like a certain part to make it sustainable. I think it's just like adding on. So maybe that's even worse in my case. Yeah, no, I feel like it's like now it's like, oh, like trendy, like, oh, I thrifted this kind of thing versus like a genuine, like I don't shop like online anymore. I always want to get those like capsule wardrobes. I feel like honestly, I am happier when I have less. Like sometimes, you know, when you travel and then you like travel really lightly and you have, you rewear the same things like over and over. And I honestly, it doesn't make me feel any less happy that I'm like, oh, I wore this shirt like three days ago. Oh no, like it's never that. Sometimes I go through stages where I'm like, I'm just going to purge and get like a capsule wardrobe and then I just end up buying more things back. It's weird because like, you know those like hardcore travelers? It's not like, oh, you can wear like cute heels like in like the cobblestones of Europe, but it's like you have to wear like sneakers. Sometimes I'm like that. But then I'm like, I would be so unhappy if I never wore like something that was like a skirt. And if it was just like sneakers, jeans, and like a shirt. I don't even know where this is going, but I'm just hoping that like I'll be able to get a job in the future that'll be like casual enough that I don't have to buy like stuffy work clothes, but also like that'll like align with my personal style. I don't know how that's gonna work. Maybe I'll just like work from home. Maybe I just like have a job. <laughs> when you were um, talking about travel, YouTubers, do you watch J Damon and Joe? Um, so recently Damon, he like had a storage locker in LA, but he was like basically living in Paris and other places and recently he like cleared out his storage unit and like closed it. So now he like literally just like has like a suitcase and sometimes I'm like, damn, like I would love 
to just live in a suitcase and just like be able to just like yeet around the world like whatever I want but I also feel like I don't know if I'm the kind of person who can like actually do that you know I think I feel like I like accumulate things and I accumulate memories and like it's really hard for me to like let things go and just trust that they'll like live on in my like memory I like have to have some sort of like documentation that like this thing happened which I don't think I could fully embrace like the nomad lifestyle because I would just be like well where am I gonna keep all the shit that I've accumulated it's hard for me to let things go but I think I've just realized my brain can only fit so much so I'm like maybe it's time to let these like a certain memory go it's just like in terms of everything I'm trying to be more like intentional with what I record or what I with what I buy I used to like be like oh like I'll take like 50 videos or like a ton of pictures if I'm like oh I really want to remember this but now I feel like I've been like okay I will just take like one photo just to or like not even take a photo and I'll just be like you know I enjoyed it but I'll have this memory for a little bit and once it's gone it's gonna be okay so that you know at least like I enjoyed it in this present time I'll just like hope that there will be like fun memories in the future to like fill up that little space once I forget it that I've tried to teach myself to like not get so attached to different like things or memories yeah. and then just be like I'm glad it served me at the present and I will like be grateful and then let it go it's like the Marie Kondo like thank you and then you just like Yeet. donate it <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But honestly, for the most part, I don't really read my old journals or I don't look at the old photos and I've just like come to that realization. So for the photos that I do really like, I like I tried to like put them out or guard them. But then for the rest, I kind of just like delete because I'm like, well, they were nice memories, but I have a limited amount of space on my phone. <laughs> so yeah i feel that in high school actually throughout like from elementary to high school i was really good about journaling because i felt like if i didn't get my thoughts down on paper it was just like in my brain and like i couldn't fully process something until i had like written it down my issue with that is that like the human memory is so unreliable and it like every time you access a memory it changes the memory slightly so i feel like in a way like my most like precious memories i'm like every time i think about them that comes at a cost like i'm changing the memory slightly and like what if like one day like the memory is completely different from what actually happened and then i like freak out because I'm like I can't save what happened and like if these people are gone like specifically like memories with my parents they're super important to me because especially as an only child I was the only one who like grew up with my parents so it's not like I can like turn to my siblings and be like hey remember that time like mom and dad did this like Nala yeah <laughs> me talking to like my dog but like after those memories with my parents are gone like they're gone like there's no one else I can like talk to about so it's just kind of like I'm like the type of person who will like over romanticize the past um, and I'll only remember like the really good part and then I'll like really miss it and just be like wow life is so much better and then I don't really like exist fully in the, in the present I don't like appreciate my present like enough so I'm always just like oh I wish I was like back there or like back at that time and then like I look back at like my present now and I'm like oh I wish I'd like appreciated it more nostalgia is kind of rough to deal with yeah do you ever like have moments where you're like literally in the moment but you're already like oh I'm gonna like miss this so much when it's over yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sometimes with like big groups and then I get like very quiet and I just like try to observe people and like observe them really like i'm just like i need to record this in my head <laughs> like and then i think in those moments i try to like write it down but then i also like don't read it again it's just like nice to have it because also like even if you write it down or you take a picture it doesn't really fully encapsulate all the feelings if it's like a conversation like pulling out your phone and taking a picture just like ruins the whole mood because we've been kind of like simpy which is like us always do you want to like end with like one of the like memories that you had that were like very like wholesome and pure okay do you want to go first okay so senior year everyone was done with college apps because it was like winter break so i went to san francisco with with some friends and we kind of like just walked around we like walked to union square and like the christmas tree was up so we just like sat around um we got some rosé and then we just like walked around and we decided like randomly to go to the moma so we were just kind of like tipsy and just like going through the museum i remember this moment when we were sitting in like the yerba buena gardens where i was like this is just like so nice first semester like senior year is like so stressful and that was like the first moment in like basically like a year i had like no responsibilities and like college decisions hadn't really come back yet so i wasn't like worried about like what is college gonna be like am I gonna make friends or whatever it was just like an in-between moment where everything was perfect and I had nothing to worry about and I feel like low-key that might have been the last time I felt like fully relaxed which is great considering that was like two years ago <laughs> God. Like after I hiked Mount Fuji and like it's such a cliche like the sun was rising I feel like I have a lot of good like sunrise moments because it's so quiet and such a good time for like reflection and introspection But it was like we climbed for so long and everyone was like there for the same reason And there were just so many people just like standing there quietly and it was like kind of surreal Like just seeing like hundreds of people standing together just like quietly watching the sunrise for even like five minutes And I, I took a video of it I, and I watched the video like sometimes because it's like so calming But it still doesn't like capture that feeling of just like being like wow the world is so great and we're so small Sometimes it's just so nice to know how insignificant you are in like the grand scheme of things like how magical the world is this is such a, like a, um, it's so cheesy uh, it just makes me very grateful for this like little little moment to be alive that like puts it really well like it is cheesy but like damn like i'm experiencing this and like like i feel like it kind of loses its meaning because people say it so much or, like but i feel like sometimes in like very small moments you're like dang also that time we went to um Greywell cove for my birthday like yeah. that was like a really sweet time and like i genuinely miss just going to the beach and like i think there's something about like water or just like i think just like very rebirth grand, like <laughs> 
<laughs> Water oh, in oh, Gatsby God. and the Awakening as a theme. <laughs> High school English paper <laughs> die. Yeah, I think like nature definitely is like a good point of recentering yourself. Um, tying it back to sustainability. <laughs> if we don't do something about it, it's all gonna disappear. So, oh, sad. That's sad again. <laughs>